Nancy knows her mother. My mother is long distance from me. I know all of her neighbors. I took them all out to lunch. I went in and I said, Mom, tell me who your best friends are. And she gave me a list and I invited them. I didn't invite my mother. I just invited the neighbors. And I invited them all to lunch. And I said, I live thousands of miles away from my mom. And I know she loves you and cares about you. And I know you care about her. And here's my telephone number. And if you see something different about my mom, I would hope that you would call me. I have a mother who, if, if she was dying, would tell you she was just fine. I'm just fine, dear. Just fine. I never know how she really feels. So, and they have called me and said, you know, your mother isn't getting enough exercise after she broke her hip. You need to call and motivate her more. And I do. Now, how will you coordinate care for your parent if they need it? That's the second part of the plan, care coordination. The goal here is to ensure that problem solving is done in a coordinated way. This means that everyone has specific tasks and that no one's responsibilities overlap with anyone else's. By coordinating care efforts, you'll ensure that everyone feels they are making a positive contribution and avoid duplication of effort. Start with your top two areas of concern. Put a family or support group member in charge of each of these problem areas. If a family member can't contribute time, there are other ways they can help, such as pitching in financially. They can also gather information or make phone calls. There's a lot that needs to be done, and every person brings their own special strengths to the caregiving process. If you find that your family and support network can't meet all the needs, that's okay. You still have other resources. Remember, the extended care plan isn't cast in concrete. If you make a mistake, or if part of it doesn't seem to work, that's okay. Just make some changes and get it back on track. Your extended care plan is simply a place to start. It's a map that will help you, your parent, and your family along the way. Richard Castillo, whose mother had Alzheimer's, cautions you not to be too hard on yourself. Caregivers probably do more harm to themselves than the patient does to them. You're hard on yourself because you keep second-guessing yourself about whether you made the right decisions at the right time, are you handling this in the best way. The decisions that you take are the right ones for you at the time that you do it. It does no good to second-guess yourself. Be sure to keep track of what your family and support network members have committed to do. Send an email to everyone on the team, keeping them informed, involved, and appreciated. It will help everyone stay organized and keep the plan on track. The extended care plan requires careful and constant monitoring to keep it working well. It also keeps you in a position to make sure that you can quickly make adjustments as things change. Ethnogerontologist Dr. Julie Richardson says, I guess what you have to ultimately end up doing is recognizing that you've done the best that you can do and you're just going to have to trust and you're going to have to monitor carefully, but that you can't do it all. And in relegating, you still have the option of monitoring and change. If this does not work, then you can change. Setting up a monitoring system is easy. Keep a list of key contact people and when they should be contacted. Key contact people are often the first people to notice changes in your parent. They're the first to see when something is wrong. Calling them directly can save you time and effort. Key contact people include those who are providing a vital service to your parent, like a nurse, therapist, or doctor. Geriatrician Dr. Mark Kubik says, It's important to become involved with your parents' care if you become at all suspicious that there is a problem involving needs that are being unmet. And that may involve participating with your parent in going to a physician. And as you go along with the plan, you may find that you'll be learning how to navigate the system. I, I think also in that first time, we didn't have the experience to know the right questions to ask. And I think um, after you've had the experience, you, you get a little bit more sophisticated and you learn to ask questions or you learn to push for certain things. Because of our first experience, we were able to advocate for mom and say, you know, she, isn't she eligible for rehab? Shouldn't she have that a little bit before she goes home? And, um, you know, because we asked, we got it. Another group of key contact people are those people who are truly interested in your parent and his or her welfare friends or family members. And the third group of key contact people include those folks who regularly visit your parent. 
everyone from the housekeeper to the delivery person to the neighbor next door. If you have questions to ask a specific person, make sure you jot them down before you call, and that way you'll be sure to get all the answers that you need. Monitor the plan frequently, and don't be afraid to make changes when you think they're necessary. But always include your parent. She or he has to know exactly what needs are being addressed and by whom. This takes a lot of the worry and unwanted surprise out of their daily lives. So monitoring the plan also helps you keep your parent better informed. This program was produced by AgingParents.com, which is solely responsible for its contents. Thanks for watching How to Help Your Aging Parent Get Organized, including an extended care plan. If you need more help about getting organized, feel free to visit our website at agingparents.com. To watch more helpful videos, click here to subscribe or watch another video. Also, check us out on Facebook or on Twitter. Thanks again for watching.